In addition to inventing the telephone, the Scottish-born inventor Alexander Graham Bell conducted extensive research in aerodynamics. A series of photographs captures Bell and his team testing various kite designs, all based on the tetrahedral structure. This pyramid-shaped form intrigued Bell, as its cells could share joints and reduce the weight-to-surface area ratio. Bell's ongoing research led him to pursue the idea of creating a kite large enough to carry a person. His efforts culminated in the creation of the box kite, a design specifically developed in this quest for the ultimate kite. This box kite design involved connecting several triangular kites together with a frame, forming a box shape. This increased the kite's surface area with minimal added weight, enhancing its flight capabilities. Bell's innovation didn't stop there. He combined multiple box-like cells to form large pyramidal structures, each with three triangular sides and a triangular base. This geometric shape, known as a tetrahedron, is one of the most stable forms in nature. Though the design appears complex, tetrahedral kites are surprisingly easy to manage when flown. Bell's work with tetrahedrons extended beyond kite making. He incorporated them into construction projects, such as a tower on his property at Bain Bray in Cape Breton Ness, as well as other structures. His notebooks reveal how fascinated he was by the strength and utility of the tetrahedron as a three-dimensional structure. Bell's early flight experiments also involved collaboration with a group of talented individuals known as the Aerial Experiment Association, AEA. The AEA's members, in addition to Bell, included Mabel Gardner Hubbard Bell, Frederick Walker, Casey Baldwin, John Alexander Douglas McCurdy, Glenn Hammond Curtis, and Lieutenant Thomas Ethelin Selfridge. In 1907, Bell built the largest tetrahedral kite called the Signet, meaning little swan in French. The kite was composed of over 3,293 cells, measuring 40 feet, 12.2 mm in length, and weighing 91 kilograms. It successfully carried a human passenger, lifting him 168 feet above the water when towed behind a steamship. Sadly, the kite crashed upon landing, tearing into pieces. The passenger, Thomas Ethelin Selfridge, survived the flight but would later become the first person to die in an airplane crash aboard the Wright Military Flyer in 1908. Although the Signet was beyond repair, Bell believed it had fulfilled her function, demonstrating that the tetrahedral system could be used in aerial structures. During this period, Bell also explored a large circular tetrahedral truss design. While tetrahedral kites are stable and easy to fly, they aren't suited for light winds due to the weight of their structural spars. They require moderate to strong winds to perform well. Despite the rise of the Wright brothers' airplanes and a growing disinterest in kites, Bell continued his experiments, creating two more massive tetrahedral kites named Signet II and Signet the Thread. Unfortunately, neither was successful. The Signet 3, equipped with a 70-horsepower motor, was reported to have flown just one foot. By 1912, Bell abandoned his kite experiments. Today, some of Bell's kites are on display at the Alexander Graham. Bell National Historic Site, 